Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted Studio. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be working with HTVA, which is Heat Transfer Vinyl Adhesive. Now give me just a sec to make sure I'm live on my page and I can find myself and uh, I can see what's going on so I can catch up with everything, make sure we're all where we're supposed to be. And yep, it shows, shows I'm here. So now, oh, I forgot to turn my volume down. Shame on me. Okay, so now I've got the, the page open, the questions open, and we are all good to go. All right, let me share with you. Heat transfer vinyl adhesive is this stuff. Now it comes in rolls. The shortest roll we carry is three feet, and it's matte on one side and glossy on the other. You can use it with your Cricut or your Silhouette to cut into this area. You cut a pattern and then you weed out the stuff that you don't want. What does that mean? It means that there's a cutter in your Cricut, it cuts out an outline or a, a design, and you remove part of this so that only part, the only part that's left is the stuff that's what you're going to use on your fabric to help release your foil. Um, I have a couple patterns that I've already done. We're gonna finish a very short weed out of a couple of things, and then we're gonna go right into the foiling so you can see exactly how this works. Now, one thing to remember, well, I'll get it with you when I, I angle the camera down, so forgive me for some awkward angle marks here, moves here. I just wanna make sure you can see. There we go. Yes, I have to adjust this by hand. Hi, Desiree. Okay, so as you can see, I have a pattern already cut in my heat transfer vinyl adhesive uh, that I did earlier today. We actually have another one sitting to the side that's a very large one, um, but these are the smaller ones. And I cut some flowers out. So we're gonna do, uh, we have a black apron sitting to the side. We're gonna do um, flowers and we're going to do a rabbit on this apron. I thought it would be very cute and summery, even if the apron's black. So when you cut this on the Cricut, you'll see an outline that shows you your pattern. And when we send this to you, we actually send you pre-cut uh, patterns. We have pre-cut patterns that you can order on our website. Um, we also send you a little tiny party light that you can strap on your finger and it helps you to see the lines. But the best thing I can tell you to help you see the lines, <laughs> do this on a dark surface. Once you've had your pattern cut into this, you put it down on a dark surface so you can see these cut lines better. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I mean. Just a second to get my zoom here. All these newfangled thingies and it takes me twice as long to figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, you should be able to see just a little better now there we go. So right in here, you can see that I've got, I weeded out pattern, but there's still little bits that have to come out. And the white lines are the cut marks. So um, this is something I order online and all this little stuff that's here, the pattern didn't line up exactly like the SVG file showed it uh, in the photos. And that's part of the thing with a Cricut. It takes a little while to figure out how to work your files. But once you've gotten this cut, you put this on the mat for the Cricut, not shiny side up. You put the dull side up because this dull side, all this stuff that I'm peeling off, this is the heat transfer vinyl adhesive. The shiny side is just the carrier film. So you cut it and then you weed your pattern out and I did most of the weeding already. Um, and my personal trick is that you weed everything except the outline because this film is sticky. And so <laughs> it'll be great to help it adhere to the fabric while you're about to do the ironing and on of this product, but it's not great when it just sits around, it picks up dust, it gets messy. Um, 
the one that I completely weeded out that's sitting to my side has picked up some little scraps of gold leaf on it. You don't, you want to do the outside just before you're ready to put this, turn it over and put this onto your fabric. Turning it over is key because while you see the pattern this way, you actually have to flip it over to apply it to the fabric, which means if you have lettering, you need to mirror the lettering. There's a, there's a setting on a silhouette and a cricket that says mirror. So it has to look to you like it's in a mirror because when you flip it over, then it'll read the right way. Um, I did a lot of t-shirts for a bunch of um, different stores locally recently. And the first one, of course, because I don't do them all the time, I forgot that you had to, to mirror the letters. All right, and of course, if you want things facing different directions, you mirror it as well. So first thing I'm going to do here is peel this all off. Now, if you look to the side, let me zoom back out a little bit. Over here, you see I have a couple pieces of tape strapped down to my board. This keeps all these little peely bits from going everywhere. Um, it's also because it's sticky, then I'm just putting it down, it's sticking to that. I don't have big messes to clean up. Before I did figured that one out, I'd have all these little bits and pieces of um, the cut heat transfer vinyl adhesive all over the place. Sort of like I have over here because I picked it up and forgot to stick it to the tape. It makes your cleanup way, way, way easier. All right, so let's pull this off. Now, because these flowers are in different positions here, and again, these little dots and stuff, I'm not, these little floofy cutouts here, they were all part of the original design for, I think, this. And the little dots went on this pattern. They're so small, I'm not going to worry about them. But what I am going to do is cut each of these flowers separately and apart from each other. Right. Uh, why am I doing that? Because it's going to make it easier when I'm ready to place them. Since they didn't, um, when I bought the file, these were lined up in a specific way. They looked super cute. I was right, ready to go. Then you open the SVG files. It goes into your Cricut cutter, they, you know, they, it says make it and it unarranges all the flowers and I'm like, oh crap. So clearly I need to cut this apart and then place these items as I see fit. And that's not a big deal. Just be careful cutting because, you know, some of these little things can get very close to each other and you don't want to lose your design. So I've got one, two, three, for six flowers and then we're going to put a big old bunny on it and the big old bunny's already been cut and weeded because that was uh, a pattern that took quite a while to deal with and you'll see why when I pull it out. Okay, so I have all of these. I'm going to set my cutting board aside because I'm going to be doing some more of this tomorrow. I have, um, I, I even taped down my board just so you can see this. I taped down my board so things wouldn't shift. But I have, uh, my social media guys are coming tomorrow to help me. Let's open this up a little bit to do some videotaping and stuff. So what I'm using today, because I don't have a big square piece of board, I have some cutouts floating around that I haven't done any painting on or I've only painted on one side and we're going to use this because a hard surface works best when you're pressing this stuff down. Um, I have a couple of all cotton aprons that sit around and you might remember I did a red, white and blue one of these for my husband a couple years ago. So I'm going to give a quick iron to the surface here just to kind of take down some of the wrinkling this has been 
hold it up for a long time. Um, if it's new and you've never used it, throw it in the wash before you do this. You want all the sizing fabric, uh, sizing material cleaned off of this first. Hi, Diana. Nice to see you here. I'm reading what Desiree says. Have you ever tried dusting with cornstarch? Um, you know, I don't want to dust it with the cornstarch because I don't want the cornstarch to interfere with the heat transfer vinyl. I don't want that on this surface. Um, so what I was saying here is you want to wash these before any fabric before you do this because fabric when clothing is made, it's a, the, the fabric has a stuff on it called sizing, which is what keeps the shape solid during cutting and stitching and so it doesn't shift around. However, you don't want it on the surface when you're doing this because it can interfere after the first wash with how the adhesion stays. So you take these, you throw them in the washing machine once and then um, just go forward with your uh, foiling after it's done. All right, now, like I said before, you always take the outside parts off last, so you get to watch me weed off these outside bits as we go. And we're gonna do these one at a time in placement because, uh, yeah, I gotta make sure I got all of these placed right and I might want a little overlap, which is not what they were doing on their file. And I have files from a lot of different um, companies and each one's file system can work differently. Uh, Now, if you see any of these files that you see me using here when I do these, I will pre-cut them for you on your HTVA. Give me a buzz, I'll let you know what it's gonna cost. You don't wanna pay for me to weed it because it takes far longer to do the weeding than it does to do the cutting. And uh, nobody wants to pay my rates for stuff like that. Okay, so I've got that there. And let's get this one weeded. And you know, all this takes a little time, but that's part of the project. Enough, if you go too fast, you never get what you want. I don't like to rush things. As you can see, now that that outer bit of adhesive is coming off, you can see that the pattern is a very line drawing style on here. Hey, don't stick to me, stick to the fabric for heaven's sakes. And as you can see, there's little bits of gold leaf everywhere in my studio from doing the gilding on the chairs and then gluing the gilding and drawing personally. It's not going to hurt anything. You might have a little, a little gold highlight here or there. And with the foils that I'm using, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. I'm going to kind of space them out a little bit. Get my other ones. I set them all down on the floor. I want to put this one right there. Make sure I'm putting everything right where I want it. Uh, let's see, do I want that one there? Do I want the daisy there? Oh my gosh, so many decisions, it's so complicated. 
<laughs> All right, let's put that daisy there. So we're gonna do this sort of in layers because you all know me, if it's gonna fail, it's gonna fail on camera. And it's been a little while since I, you know, when you do these things constantly, you get your system down and it goes really, really fast. If you don't do them constantly, um, the first ones tend to be an oops. So I'm trying to create a pattern so that if I have an oops on my first one, the next one will lay better. And you see what I'm saying? This stuff is sticky. That's why you want to wait until the last possible minute before you start um, taking the background off. Because every it sticks to everything and everything sticks to it. little bit over here off. Okay, let's start with these three and then we'll go on from there. Okay, so you can see I sort of have them unintentionally, actually let's do it this way because I actually unintentionally had them in height order and I hate doing that. I like them staggered in height a little bit. Okay, so I've got them down there I have my iron now you're gonna need a little pressure on here I set my iron between cotton and silk um, I'm sorry cotton and wool you're gonna to have to check because you put this on and once it starts turning clear you'll be able to pull the backing off so you can see how it's going this is white here and this is turning clear here so the clearer it gets, the easier it's going to be to remove. And a little pressure is always good. And while that sits on there for just a second, I'm going to get our foil. We're going to use Harlow foil today. Now everybody's like, oh my God, you left the iron down. You're going to burn everything. No, I'm not. I promise you I'm not. So I thought this would make a nice pattern to go on flowers. It's a kind of nice organic coloring, but lots of variation. So let's see how we're doing taking this, lifting this up. Ah, it doesn't want to lift. So again, check your... Check your heat. If it's not melting down, because it should get nice and clear and grab to the fabric, and if it's not doing that, then your iron's not hot enough. And my iron might not be. I keep going up until it gets hot enough. Like I told you all, this was my son's iron that I bought him for college never once used it so when i brought it ah there we go getting it nice and clear now i can see it starting to pull back that's what we want it needs to be hot enough so that you can release the backing on here because you don't want to pull it up and then pull your adhesive up piece there that just didn't want to come and stick. This flower tip does not want to let, want to stay down there. All right, come on. And here we go. So now you can see it right there. We're going to do the same with all of these and then we'll put the foil right over it. Be careful where you put your iron so that you don't get the adhesive on the bottom of your iron. See, I almost did that right there. That would have been disappointing. There's that coming off. 
And you can get little pull-ups too, so pay attention. Let's do this. Up. There we go. All three of those are released. So the next thing we're going to do is take the foil, put it on top of the warm adhesive on there. Now, it you want to do this. You don't want to let this cool and then come back and try to reheat it. It works best if you put the oil on when it's warm. Now I'm going to take a little piece of parchment paper because um, even though these foils are made for fabric and they're made for heat, I find that sometimes you can get your iron just a little too hot and it can make the foil crumple underneath it and so putting an ironing cloth or a piece of parchment paper or tissue or something like that really, really helps. Now my iron right now is set on cotton and you have to test this with every your own iron because everybody's iron runs a little differently. And I've had ones that run really hot. I've had ones that run very cool. Actually, see this it's adhering here. Let's get this right there. And it doesn't seem like getting my little hot, so it wants to almost melt that plastic carrier film. I'll make sure I get in right down at these edges so the stems all get their pattern on them. Now, the other thing to tell you is if your foil does not release well when you pull this back, um, get a fresh piece of foil. Don't uh, try to do it from the same piece again and again because the heat will change it and your adhesion will not be good. Now, I personally find that if I cool this a little, just let the fabric cool down just a second before I pull the foil off, I get a better release. So let's hope I'm not lying. Oh, look how pretty that is. And that just doesn't want to stay there. Okay, let me try. Actually, let me pull this off and then. I'll use a spot that the uh, foil has not been touched with heat. And again, I don't pull straight up. I pull completely perpendicular. It's less stress on the adhesive. But look how cute that came out. You okay, have a little bit of foil right here that has not had an iron on it. I'm gonna put my paper over here and we're gonna see if I can get a little more on that stem right there. Yep, I filled in that part. Now, we're going to take our other patterns and we're going to go over and do other spots. Give me just a sec, let me peel these out. Why am I not um, doing them all at once? Because I needed to be able to press and release the adhesive here. I couldn't just press and release the adhesive and not put the foil on it because putting these on and then pressing and releasing them, I would have gummed up all the adhesive. Okay, I need to put this on the black so I can actually see out. I just really get a kick on how well this works. You get such cool patterns here. And 
I love how the Harlow becomes a, a soft rainbow effect, kind of muted here instead of so vivid. And that's good because we're gonna put a more vivid foil on the second layer so that it looks, you get dimension in the way this looks. Um, and I like that idea. You know me, gotta try everything. Now, if I miss your questions because I'm actually trying to pay attention to what I'm doing, you know I come back and I go through things. So, um, oops, I almost missed a, weed, a spot to weed out. Um, be patient with me today because there's an iron and it's July and I can't have my air conditioner on that's uh, right next to me because it makes it sound like there's a jet plane taking off and you guys don't hear me very well. The new Mevo camera's microphone picks up everything. So I don't want to blast you out of here. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to go there. Or do I want it there? I think I kind of like these two in here. So we'll do it that way. You guys have been keeping me very busy here in the studio. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the orders. Um, don't forget, it's July. July's product of the month is glitter. Glitter, glitter. I can't even say it that fast. I can't say it as fast as I can type it, but glitter, glitter, glitter. Don't miss the chance to make your personality sparkle. Yes, I've been making up jingles in my head or little slogans in my head as I sit here and weed this stuff out. I'm dangerous when I have too much time by myself. Weird things come into my head. As soon as I get these three weeded, I'll come and take a second, go look and see if I have any questions. And then this is all adhesive. This is all leftover adhesive. No, you can't really save it for stuff. You can, if, I mean, I can, you can save a little bit of it if you needed to patch a tiny spot. But once it's off of the backing paper, it's, it's kind of hard to use for anything. So um, be aware of that. Okay, so we got that one going there. And I think, you know what I'm gonna do? Since I have this space here, I'll put that daisy right over here. I'll have this flower sit right there. Now this is gonna to be tough because there is actually a, a little ridge here that will make it a little bit of a challenge when I release it. So that might be the spot where I could have a break in the pattern. As soon as I get this weeded, I'll go go over, take a look at the comments, see what you all have to say if you need any help on anything or if I'm not making sense on anything. Of course, if I don't make sense in what I'm saying, ask a question. It's there's, It means that I'm not communicating it right, so I am more than happy to uh, try again because when I'm doing this, I'm talking to myself and I already know what I'm doing while you guys don't necessarily know. So if I'm not making sense to you, uh, that's not your fault, it's mine. And sometimes I get, my thinking jumps ahead of my mouth <laughs> and I lose my words. So seriously. Don't hesitate. Okay. So now I've got all my flowers placed. Let me check the questions. Oh, thank you, Desiree. Desiree says, I'm a great teacher and demo woman. You know, I appreciate that. Sometimes I don't know if I'm making sense. 
And Desiree is acting as hostess today, which I enjoy. Yeah, Desiree, thank you. I appreciate she Desiree is helping me with stuff, um, understanding stuff on my cutter. And the thing is that each one of these patterns, the files come in differently. I don't always know um, exactly what somebody is trying to uh, get through with that kind of thing. You know, they come in, each file is sent differently. It unzips differently. I have to extract them and then hope they make sense when I load them, upload them to the cutter. So, you know, it's all a little bit of playing with the machine. And because I'm always doing so many things, I have to relearn from time to time. You know, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's just a fact of, you know, this is what happens when you do a lot of stuff. Okay, let's see if this peels off nicely. Oh yeah, that one let go. Now my iron is currently set on cotton, so that means it's releasing this really well. Um, but I try on lower because, you know, I don't, I don't want to take the chance of scorching stuff. And sometimes you're using a fabric that does not like the setting cotton too, so you have to be aware of that. Test your own iron before taking word, what I'm saying as my heat as gospel for you. That may not be the same. Let's get all of these stuck down. As you see, I'm also ironing right over the other foil. Foil will not be harmed by me ironing over it like I'm doing. Go. Let's get up here. Remember, you're you're melting vinyl onto fabric, so you're melting a plastic, and your iron can get a little sticky on the mounting tape. It just does. That's why you don't want to put it all the way up to like wool. Because yes, you can actually eventually melt the mounting film. It's plastic, folks. Everything plastic you eventually can melt. And I just, see, I just got some of that, my little squeak bits I got onto my iron. So now I have some there. That's not going to make me happy. I'm going to have to be careful when I put the foil down. This is messy. I set my iron right down where I had a little spare piece. I knew that was going to be, I'm right at that edge right there. So guys, pay better attention than I do. I'm trying to do stuff in a live so stuff gets messy around me. Whereas if I was just working this in the studio by myself and I didn't have to talk and think and all of that at the same time, it would probably be a tidier result. My iron wouldn't be coated with stuff. And if your iron does get coated with this, clean it off while it's hot. It cleans off much better. You know, I knew I was gonna have problems right in here because there's a seam right here. And so getting it pressed down so it grabs onto the seam edge is not always easy. A little stinker, you don't want to grab down right there. There we go. Okay, so I have those. Now, I'm gonna share this. This is what my iron bottom looks like because I got the adhesive stuck to my iron. I cannot wipe it on my table like I might normally do because why? There's plastic on the table and that's a bad way to burn things. All right, so I'm gonna take this and we're going to use some of our Zane foil. So we're gonna have a little different color story going over here. So these will be more like the shadow in the background.
Now I'm going to be really careful because I have this little bits and pieces of the vinyl here stuck here and I've got some stuck here. I want to apply my uh, foil carefully. I want to try to avoid some of those spots if I can. Now I'm going over right one spot right there so what I'm going to do is take my scissors and snip out a little spot right there so the foil lies down neatly but I don't get that spot. Hopefully it'll grab to the parchment paper and actually lift up. And I can kind of scrape it with my fingers right now. There we go. Okay, so now I'm setting this down. It's on the warm adhesive. Let's put the parchment paper over here. And I'm going to yeah, see, I'm, now I'm offloading the adhesive onto the parchment paper. Look, like I'm cleaning my iron as I'm putting down foil. This will never be an iron that goes into my house to actually iron clothes. And I don't iron very much at home either. Shocker, I know. Uh, I don't think anybody irons that much anymore. Turn it that way. Um, but I have a lot of linens that I've inherited, so I always have an iron around for linens or the, the rare piece of clothing that I must press. I think most people are that way now. Most people don't spend a lot of time ironing. My mother, oh my God, she was an ironing maniac. I think many of our mothers were. Just a little bit here. Get this edge really well because that's, I know there's adhesive there and I know it was a challenge to get on there. My mother used to have one day a week where she ironed and it was one of the few times you'd ever see her in sweatpants because she was very proper. She was always always in foul humor after spending the day ironing. <laughs> My sister and I used to hide from her on those days. Okay, it looks like it's pretty well adhered. And I am cleaning off the adhesive from my uh, stuff, from my iron. All right, let's give this a little cool down here. I want to let the adhesive get a little bit firm. That's been my experience is the best. Let me see if I've got any questions here. Yes, the machine is trying it. Parchment works, yes, but I'm using, I, I, yeah, I'm using cooking parchment. Um, I buy it by the, because I use it for everything here in the studio. I actually find it's great when I use epoxy and everything else. It's one of those things that it doesn't stick to stuff, so it's really, really easy to use for something like this. Oh, look how nicely that's releasing. But there is a little bit that's gonna need some more right here, so once I feel, finish peeling this all back, I'll put another bit on. Now somehow, right down here, I got a little bit on there too. Oh well. That's kind of cool looking though. And that one spot with that one leaf that was so tri uh, tiresome before is being tiresome still. All right, this is an unironed spot on my parchment, on my uh, foil. Again, if you try to put foil on that you've already applied to heat to, you will not get a good result. Use fresh foil. Let's let this peel, cool off. And as you can see, my parchment paper even got a little stuck to some of the adhesive. Again, fortunately, parchment doesn't stick to things. 
So once this is cool, it'll peel back. See, I just peel it right off. No problem. Ta-da! All is fine. And there we go. We've got the little spots that had none. So now we've got these two patterns running here. It looks like a little field. And over here is where we're going to put Mr. Bunny. Now, Mr. Bunny, I cut way earlier today and weeded him because he is much big, bigger and much more complex. And I have to make sure there's no little bits of stuff stuck to him. Here is Mr. Bunny. He is a big fella. See, I've got these extra bits of the adhesive floating around, so I need to move that all out of the way. Now, this is a big guy. He is a good 15 inches long. I'm going to iron this part first just so it's nice and flat. He's a good 15 inches long. I want this to sit nicely. He's going to come from the edge. He's going to hit up over this pocket. So it's going to take a few minutes to get all the adhesive released. I'm going to have to move him around. I just don't simply, I simply don't have a board big enough to deal with this here in my studio and everything's covered in plastic. So I have to be careful so he stays safe. But look how fast that turns. So you can see the adhesive melting. Don't touch it with your fingers, it's hot. And then this is it before it's melted. And yes, this bunny as a cutout will be available on our website once I finish messing with this today. And we will send it to you unweeded with a little light to help you weed it out. Again, my best tip is always do the weeding over something black or dark brown or navy blue. You'll simply see it better. Okay, so here we go, big bunny. Let's start getting him adhered up here. Hold this down a little bit, let it melt. And you can hear it, my iron is sticking to the plastic here a little bit because it's set on cotton. So if you're not comfortable with this happening on your iron, put the parchment down, put a tea towel down. You can do that with the, the HTVA too. I like to see it so I know exactly where my iron's going, but this will work if you put a piece of parchment over it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, so now let's put, oh, that one's, that area is not pressed down. So let me get the toe. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top, start peeling back at the top. Make sure it stays warm while you're peeling. It really helps to do that well. Again, completely rolling it down. Do not pull it straight up. You won't have a good result. You'll put strain on the adhesive. This Right on this seam is where it's gonna get gummy because it's gonna wanna fold back on itself a little bit. And that's where I'm having problems right here, right here. Right here. So watch when you have a seam to make sure it's been well pressed. That's my hair. Got my hair stuck in the adhesive. And as you can see, I just roll it down like this. This is how it works best. Okay, so you can see my bunnies on there. Yay, that worked. Okay, on the bunny, we are going to use the same Zane foil. And where we used it 
with horizontal patterning, we're going to turn it vertically. Okay. Now, I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. And I'm going to have to move this since my ironing surface is nowhere near as large as the bunny is. We're going to apply the foil and smooth it down. Help Again, always helps to smooth it down over the warm surface. Let me grab my parchment that fell behind my chair. Okay. Again, we're just going to start by pressing on here. You're making the heat activate the adhesive. If you feel a seam under there, really work your seam. I have a pocket seam right there, so I know that's going to be a challenge spot, just like the edge over here was. Alright, let me get up. So I'm working the whole shape. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, doing this in July, without having my air conditioner on behind me, I am going to be as cooked as an Easter egg. Okay, let's pull this up. And take your time to work this stuff. Don't rush it. Foils like heat. And this is why we tell you when you're using other forms of adhesive, if it's not releasing well, add a hair dryer to it. This is what this stuff was actually made for, is heat. So let me take a look here. Now you can see where I got the sticky spots from the parchment paper stuck to the foil. <laughs> Oh, I'm so good at this. I make such big messes. Let's make sure. I'm just going to keep working this. Take your time. Don't rush it. You should, when you lift your parchment paper or your tea towel, see the areas that are stuck to the foil. It's pretty natural. It kind of sucks it down, and you should see it fairly well. Pull this off. Put that to the side. The reason it was sticking is because, if you remember, I had melted some uh, HTVA on my iron that then melted up to the parchment. So it's not a problem with the foil, it's a problem with the quality of my home ex skills. Okay, let's cool this off a little bit. That's still pretty hot. I need to iron that edge anyway, so I might as well give it a little iron there. Now, um, normally we say let it cool 100%. It does not necessarily have to cool 100%, but it should cool quite a bit. It works better if it's not hot. You don't want to pull this when it's hot, 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 because then the adhesive is still gummy. You can pull it off of the fabric. It works better when it's cool. Now, if I were doing multiple pieces, I would have tossed this over, let it cool off while I did something else. That's not what happened. We're doing this on a live. So you get to watch me do it this way. Again, I'm rolling my foil back. I'm not pulling it up. Rolling. Again, puts less tension on the surface. I can feel it's still a little warm there. Even my wood's warm. I'll pull a piece of wood out from under there. Put it on the cool plastic because plastic's nice and cool. 
Okay, let's start rolling this way. That's really cute. Oh, this is coming out cute. Oh. Little spot right there. This is what happens when you pull it while it's still warm. See, it's, you get this kind of gummy thing happening right here, and it pulls away from the surface. Cooling. This was a big surface, so that's why it's taking a little longer to cool than the flowers did. There's a lot of pattern here. And again, I don't want that doing that. So, come on. We're getting it off. Oh, this is coming out so cute. of vinyl that learned to stay stuck, tore itself right off from the rest of it. Or piece of foil, I mean, not vinyl. This is where we're getting a little pull off right here, and that's okay. I can trim that with scissors, and you don't see it as a mess. It looks like part of the pattern here. Let me clean it up. So look how cute this came out. I think there's one little spot there that needs just a little bit of foil. Again, foil. That has not been applied already to the heat. Just needs a little tiny bit on the bunny tail. So we have this darling flowers and this cute little bunny on here. Move all this to the side. Turn it around so you can see it. So we have this cute bunny mandala picture with all these scrolls and it looks like the plants are growing out of the ears and then we have the flowers here. Now, I might tonight cut some more of these because I would love to see a little more surrounding the bunny. It would make it more complete at the bottom, but I, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. I had one little area of blowout up here. Not shocking since I was forcing this for a live so you all could see it, but look how cute is that. This is what you can do with your cutter and heat transfer vinyl adhesive. Um, if you have blobs that kind of come on here like this because I'm a slob and did that, you can wait until it's cooled. Most of it will pull up and you can then also take something like a scissor and scrape it off. Now the one thing you don't want to do because there is still a little bit of sticky adhesive right here. You don't want to put more foil and heat over that spot. That's why you saw me cut it out before. Oh, I got a little piece of gold leaf stuck on here too. So what I'm going to do, I think tonight is I'll cut some more of these. We'll go from there. We'll come up, we'll put some more pattern on here. We'll get my piece of hair that's stuck in here, unstuck. But look at what a cute pattern this is. Now, this is completely machine washable, which is great because I have a lot of dust on stuff that stays in here for a while. <laughs> I mean, how cute is this? If I want, I can cut, I've got butterfly patterns. Maybe I'll cut a little butterfly that'll go on this pocket. And we're just gonna go crazy on this apron. Um, I think that's kind of it for today, but I just wanted to share with you just how cute this looks. I mean, really, how darling. I am, I'm really happy with this. Shove this over so it's in the frame. I, I cannot tell you 
this this one came out as well as I had hoped. And I do love the two different foils here. It just gives a little added dimension. So I think that will be the way I continue over here and over here. Now, like you saw me do before, you can still, once you've put foil on this, you can put another foil over this, put the parchment over here, give it a little iron, it will release, you'll have a great result. It will not hurt what you've already foiled. Um, again, the advice is don't do what I did. Let this cool completely before you peel it. I forced it for the live. I had a couple little funny spots, thank God. Really, this is the only funny spot I had. So I think we're in good shape. Um, let me see if I missed anything. Hey, Sherry, nice to see you here. Okay, so we are done with our live today. We've been on for a while and I'm gonna go back and work on my cutter to pick some more patterns for tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.